This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. This one, this one is my 98, 24 or longer. Now Barcelona will be number 99, and then Coda will be number 100. and welcome to the Algarve region of Portugal. Welcome to Portimao. This is a city proud of Portuguese history, commemorated at the 1st of December Park. The city's own history is highlighted at the Texiera Gomes Square. That's in honor of the Portuguese president that gave Portimao city rights. For many centuries, fishing was the major source of income. Then the 1755 earthquake destroyed the city. But the advent of tinned fish gave new life to the town. Nowadays, of course, also relies on income from tourists and has a bustling nightlife too. But our entertainment this first weekend of July 2019 is at the local Formula One test circuit. We're at the Autodromo do Algarve the, uh, in Portimao, Portugal, for the 24 hours of Portimao. It's our fifth race uh, this year and uh, we're looking forward to a, to a good race. We have um, a lot of cars in the GT division, some in the, in the TCE division and um, overall we are very happy to see many GT3 uh, cars this, this uh, race. We're also happy to see a good mix of uh, gentlemen, amateur and professional drivers here on the grid. Um, the new team uh, Virage with the Aston Martin GT4, they bring in uh, local legend Pedro Lamy, ex-Formula 1 uh, driver. Uh, we're very happy to see these people on their home turf joining our series as well. well I think it's cool. I mean, I my first time here and uh, seems to be uh, a cool atmosphere and the people are always uh, quite relaxed. I enjoy to be here. Being here with the Corvette guys, the 24-hour series, it's just the best. I love racing in this series. Uh, my first time in Portugal, uh, what an amazing racetrack. All the elevation changes, um, driving the Mercedes, I'm having the best time. The track is very happy to welcome back this endurance series for the third year. Well, it's, it's a great race. I think they have evolved a lot since the first event. There are a lot of more cars, more professional teams, and you can see that the level of the championship has gone up and for us it's an honor to have such a championship here on a regular basis. Qualifying was split into two sessions, one for the touring cars and one for the GTs. In the TCE series, the overall pull cleared by AC Motorsport. Oh, it was quite a big push. I mean, I think getting pole is never easy, uh, even if there are not that many cars in the class. Uh, but there are some very good drivers. So, um, yeah, I just pushed and on my first hit was quite OK, but I was four tenths off and then I just tried to give, to give it all on the second set and, and it worked out for us, so that's good. In A3, the Synchro Motorsport Honda takes the top spot. The qualification for our team, it was uh, kind of interesting. It was a good lap for us, uh, possibly. Oh, we, we could do the pole position in our class. And I'm quite happy to do the start for us. And in the GT division, Herbert Motorsport have brought three cars to the track and then number 93 takes pole position. Actually, it was quite uh, tight. Uh, I had to. Uh, I, I managed to do a, a very good lap. Uh, the car was uh, was uh, in, in a great balance. But uh, the Ferrari next to us and also uh, the cars behind us, the Porsche uh, and uh, Mercedes, were also pushing and uh, took two tires. So, but luckily, in the end, uh, we managed to to stay in front on pole. Each of the classes have their own pole sitter. It was quite tough. Uh, good for us because the current pole is amp, so without 30 kilos. Uh, I don't know, you know, the race is 24 hours, so the position now doesn't matter. Qualification went well. Uh, we did some adjustments on the shocks and, uh, and then wing settings. Uh, eventually we came down to uh, 48, which was uh, more than enough to, uh, to be on pole. 
um, it was not easy, but it was a good flying lap with a good slip field. Our qualification was quite good. Uh, we took pole position. It was uh, quite hard um, to take the lap because we had quite different uh, conditions compared to the free practice. But in the end, it's uh, yeah, most important to take pole position and yeah, we did it. As there are a lot of hours in darkness, all of the drivers have had to run in night practice. Ah, the night practice uh, was uh, especially uh, uh, long because um, uh, I start with a 60 cord. The tires uh, have uh, three hours and I do the same time that, uh, in, the, in the day. <laughs> what can we expect from the race? Weather expectations are good. Uh, yesterday it was uh, a bit chilly, especially for this time of year in Portugal, but it will be around 25, 27 degrees and of course dry. Expectation, we'll never know, just like in endurance. At the moment, I think that we are not far away on, on the grid. But uh, in endurance, the start is not very important. So the, the, tr the, the race will be long, 24 hours. Many things could happen. The, the car is very, very reliable. So we can expect uh, maybe a podium. I think if we keep ourselves clean, we're on a solid race, we've got a good pace. We're not the fastest car out there, but we've got a really smart, consistent group of drivers and a really good crew. I think you'll see us on the podium. What we saw yesterday in qualifying was um, a lot of changes. Pole positions decided quite late in qualifying uh, and um, Portimao is a circuit where anything can happen. Uh, a lot of unexpected turns or so. Uh, we're going to have a good race. I'm uh, confident for that. Missing from the start grid were two of the Herbeth Motorsport cars, including the championship contender, the number 91 Porsche. They were delayed at the fuel station. Now we were behind two other cars and stuck a bit there. So uh, the, uh, the pit light changed to red and we were 50 seconds too slow there. So in the end, it was our mistake. The warm-up laps are underway, but one car is already back to its pit crew. Well, it was at the starting line that uh, when you put on the fire extinguisher that we saw that it wasn't active. And it worked all, uh, all race, all, everything was working all the time. We replaced the cables of the extinguisher. Back to the cars on the track, the pace car pulling off into the pit lane. The two warm-up laps are completed, and now it's up to Klaus Bachler in the Herbeth Motorsport 93 car to lead the field towards the start of the Hankook 24 Hours of Portimao. The lights go out and the field are getting ready to put their cars and their drivers to the test in this 24-hour endurance race. At the head of the field, the number 93 Herbeth Porsche. Bachler was too fast for me, and he had an arm car with less 30 kilos, so maybe it's better, and also the Porsche in this circuit were really strong, uh, but we, we know that, that the race uh, is 24 hours and we, we just need to wait. At the beginning it was uh, very close, uh, it was um, making my life not uh, so easy, but uh, we were a bit better over the distance and also I think uh, through traffic we were a, a little bit better where I could uh, make a, a gap I think about 15 seconds or something like this. Of course, there are two divisions in this series, so let's go back to a start where we look at the TCE division. An early fight for the lead here too. The number 188 AC Motorsport Audi start from Paul. But by turn three, the lead has been taken by the number 131 top car, Cupra, who started from third. But by lap three, Sam de Jonge has taken back the lead. I had quite a decent start um, and, and then, yeah, try and defend my position a bit. But it was a bit, I mean, it's, it's, it's a discovery how long the tyres were last in that first stint. Back in the park, the car collection number 34 Audi and the Mercedes AMG Team Driving Academy number 500 are battling for position. Yeah, the 500 did also a good start. Um, I think Hubert Haupt was in the car and uh, after a few laps I could close the gap between him. So I was directly behind him and uh, Mercedes had a lot of uh, yeah, good traction out of the corner so it was very hard to drive against him. But uh, we had a great battle and at the end I got him in turn five, I think. About nine minutes into the race and welcome to the contest, the 454 Mercedes. Now they have their fire extinguisher working. Jimmy De Bruyke has 24 hours to make up for those lost minutes in the pits. As the race leaders catch the back of the field, that creates gaps. With the four quickest cars, we were in a row 
Uh, but after, let's say, 20 minutes, there was a gap between the first and the second, between the second and me. And I had already a big gap uh, to the fourth car after 20 minutes. The TCE lead, changing hands. Yeah, in the beginning with the Audi, uh, yeah, he was in a rush, so I let him go. But then in the second wave of uh, GT cars, I managed to pull some gap to him. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. After 45 minutes of racing, Thomas Jäger brings in the Hofer BMW. They have a 20-second lead in the GT4 class, but they've hit a problem. We had a left front tyre puncture and we needed to pit. We lost the whole lead. It was about 30 seconds or 25 seconds. We needed to pit early, 30 or 35 minutes, and this is also a very time-intensive course for us. And The result of, the, of how much we lost there, we will see later on, if we need to make one pit stop more than the others or not. The first driver changes have now taken place, and in the Pro number 11 Ferrari, it's amateur driver Yuri Pasirik. He's battling the Pro driver Klaus Bachler in the 93 Porsche, which is in the amateur class. They did the double stint, the 93 Porsche, and they gained like um, half a minute. For me, impossible to catch <laughs> such a driver, but this is not what I should do. Uh, this is Mateo's work. <laughs> I should just uh, uh, keep the car on the position where I get the car, not worse. It looked like tyre problems for the number 101 Cupra from Red Camel. When Henry Littig comes into the pits, it's clear the tyres were not the issue. Suddenly, um, the car went in the rear down and uh, he had to come in and when we saw it, uh, the whole mounting on the top of the suspension broke. It was the first time that it broke that way and it was brand new equipment, so we are a little bit struggling to understand how that could happen. 30 minutes into his stint, Stefan Pella has to return to the pit garage. We have uh, some uh, electronic problem. We have uh, engine uh, stop. And uh, sometimes uh, it's okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's on again. Okay. And after two times, the engine uh, lost uh, three, uh, only uh, turn on three cylinders. There was a quick repair earlier for the BMW number 869, but it looks like the problem hasn't been solved completely. Michael Bonk coming back to his pit crew. As well, the first stint from, from Marcus Fischer was very good, uh, but the end of them, of them stint, um, he has uh, no power. And uh, I changed with him well, from my L1 stint, I think 15 left and no power. And uh, we checked the turbo, the turbo is broken and uh, now we changed it. The number 717 from Kor Oyser in for a pit stop and the team needs to tackle two issues. My stint was finished, uh, it was time to pit. Uh, but we had uh, an issue with uh, the battery, as I said, we needed to change the battery. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, again, the wheels did not come off as they should. So we spent a long time trying to fix that, uh, getting the wheels off the car. They were class leaders, but they've already hours lost that underway first now. position. And they're in but danger of losing second place too. Risk. Let's take a quick We've look at the standings in the, the divisions and classes. <laughs> Top five in GT is still on the same lap. Heading the field, the car that started from pole position, the 93 Porsche from Herbert Motorsport, which is an A6 AM car. They're leading the field over the A6 Pro teams from Bohemia Energy, 12 seconds back in their number 11 Ferrari, and a further 27 seconds back down the field in third, the GPX Racing Porsche. In the TCE division, the race leader holds a much larger gap. The number 131 leading with their top car, Cupra, and they're now two laps ahead of the rest of the field. Their nearest competitor, the Nordschleife Racing Peugeot number 172, has completed 84 laps. So has the Autorama number 1112 Volkswagen, currently in third. This is Endurance. Uh, endurance is a combination of uh, being uh, fast, consistent, and uh, try always to bring the car back. We need to save the car and try to, to, to finish the race because the target is to bring the car back to your teammates and uh, keep going and uh, have a good result at the end. When you race in a 24-hour endurance event, your work doesn't just start on race day. Before the Saturday green flag, there are free practice sessions, qualifying and night sessions. But no driver is allowed to compete until they have attended the driver's briefing. 
Let's find out what that's all about from the clerk of the course. During this briefing, we as clerk of the course, together with the race director, will explain um, the most important regulations of the event and the specific uh, rules of this track and where they have to look out for. And during the briefing, we make some agreements together with the drivers how to perform on track. Even if you've already participated in a race in the 24-hour series by Hankook, it's still essential to be here. What we now try to do is also to explain some things happened in the races or events before um, and to uh, give some experience from that. So we are not always explaining the same things. We also explain the particular things of this track and what we have learned in previous events. Drivers know how important these briefings are. I think it's a procedure. You have to be sure that everybody knows what's written and it's a way to not accept any excuse further on. It was not said or whatsoever. So it's, I think it's a need. We usually know the procedure quite well because we are already in a 24-hour series for some time. I think now it's the fourth season. So now we just listen to the clerk of the course, what are the differences to see where the penalty box is and where we cannot exceed the track limits. That's the most important, also the uh, starting procedure and all the other details which may change and which may be different on a, on a different race tracks where we go. Oh, I, uh, I like it. They, they make it very short. Uh, they make condensed information. They give us uh, a paper. So uh, it, it's not boring. It's uh, something which has to be done. And uh, so I think uh, it's of value for us. It's compulsory to attend. So what happens if a driver doesn't show up? We do not give any penalties uh, like fines. But for example, if a team is not showing up during this briefing, then we will do the briefing during their qualifying session. So they will lose a valuable time in the qualifying session. This is the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao. Knocking on the door of the top three, the Herbeth Porsche number 91. The last couple of races, they lost out on the overall win by mere seconds to the number 11 Ferrari. Uh, for sure, we tried to switch the result from the last two races. Uh, looks like it's really, really um, small, the gap between both cars after four hours. It's only 30 seconds or 38 seconds. So, yeah, we stay in contact with them. It's always really close racing. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, we will see what happens the next hours. That opposition, the Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha Ferrari, is into the pit for a driver and tyre change. A fast pit crew makes sure the car will not lose the race in the pit lane. However, they nearly do. Uh, if, uh, I didn't understand the, the, the guys who let me, let me go. Uh, but when I started, uh, I, I saw in the mirror the big Mercedes in, in my mirror. Uh, but, but fortunately, he, he broke and we were lucky because the collision was really, really close. We get a penalty uh, for unsafe release, that, that's correct. On the track, the CP Racing number 85 is on the receiving end of a touch. The traffic is obviously always challenging at this place as well. Uh, I came upon a, a, a battle between two GT4 cars and tried to go around the outside and leave them room, and obviously it wasn't enough room. They were battling on the inside and we touched each other. I went and spoke to the other driver afterward. It was no harm, no foul. No damage to either car. The 172 in the gravel, and that's the first course 60 of the race. The rear of the car uh, glides. Uh, I don't know what. I don't know what. I was uh, accelerated. The car is recovered, and the clerk of the course evaluates the damage on the track. How did Michael enjoy his stint before the incident? It was very difficult uh, in this stint because of the heat. And uh, it's difficult to, to have a good, uh, a good line. Uh, because because of the heat. Uh. At the front of the field, the number 11 Ferrari, the 91 Porsche. The battle for first position between these contenders is on again. It was a really good fight against the Ferrari. We could uh, catching up to him and then uh, tried to pass him outside in the last corner. But yeah, he was really on a good position for the next corner. So he tried to um, yeah make the make the next maneuver but then he went a little bit wide and i could overpass him in the inside so it was a really good fight uh, more than three corners it's a good fight all the race long and yeah very happy about that fifth position the 17 and 93 cars battling for a spot but they still need to anticipate what other cars will do of course you, you always have in your mind that he don't see you yeah and this of course in a 24 hours race i'm always on my break and uh, I have in my mind that he don't see me and that he come in. But so that's why 
uh, we don't have an accident. Earlier, the number 676 Synchro Honda had their rear left bumper damaged. They removed that one and now the rear right is damaged. Yeah, so mainly it's been debris flicking up from the back wheels that has been damaging the bumper. That's the main issue we've had today. So lots of debris and electrical problems. <laughs> it's a ball of rubber that's picked up from the rear tyres that has been causing the problem. And Synchro Motorsport have been searching for a solution. It's been every race. Um, we haven't managed to fix it yet. So we've tested a few ideas. Um, we did a change in the last race as well. So I um, think the guys, it's going to be our challenge for Barcelona is to try another solution. <laughs> Enjoying his stint, Michael Schrei. I was uh, pretty exciting. I mean, uh, we have uh, five or six laps uh, lead right now. And so we can go a little bit more comfortable uh, than usually. But I had a nice fight with Aston Martin in the end of my stint and that was a lot of fun. The 188 Audi of AC Motorsport into the pits from third overall in the TCE division and they'll have a brake service in this pit stop as we look at the standings of the race after seven hours. Seven o'clock in the evening, Bohemia Energy Racing number 11, Ferrari holding the lead. The 91 has just done its pit stop and the Porsche is now two laps down on the race leader. But of course, the number 11 Ferrari is due for its pit stop soon, so the gap will rebalance itself. The number 93 is back in the top three and is only a lap down on their teammates. In TCR, the top car sport number 131 Cooper leads the race. The gap to the 112 Volkswagen from Motorama is just a lap. That's a little less than it was earlier. The 188 Audi have just had their brakes changed at the seven hour mark. They're now four laps away from second position, but they've got three laps on the fourth place car, so their third spot is quite safe at the moment. Portimao Circuit is certified for Formula One testing, and it's a very demanding track. Well, I think that the last corner, it's a very fast, and, and there is a, a downhill that increases as you are in the middle of the corner, so the car moves, and it's very fast. You have also this corner, Craig Jones' corner, that it's a very challenging corner for you to do flat, um, high speed also, and then you have Portimao corner that you go uphill, you don't know where you're going, and then you have a double right-hander, so all the corners here, they have some difficulty. There is not an easy corner on this circuit. And I think that is why it's so special. The drivers tend to agree. This is a track between uh, like a bit of spa together with uh, Austin. And uh, it's a mix of uh, different tracks that uh, makes the track uh, uh, unique. For the first time here, it's not pretty easy because you have to memorize it first. And after that, it's, you have a lot of uh, technical corners. So it's very demanding, but even if you drive it here a lot, it's still a challenge because you always can improve a little bit more in some sector of this track. It is, of course, possible to practice this track on a simulator. You can't simulate this kind of elevation change, the kind of loading that you that a driver gets in the car, the G loads, the compression down inside, uh, and even even like night practice, where you can see where you're going during the daytime, but at night the lights are shining in all different areas. So, uh, for me, the first time being here, it's it's awesome. Uh, I don't know why more people don't know about this place. Being from the United States, I didn't know anything about this racetrack, but I'm coming back for sure. This well-liked autodrome wasn't created by a famous track designer. It was designed by our team and, and a, a big part by me, so it's not a tilt design, it's a, a, our design and that's why we are so proud of it also. Sun is setting over the Algarve Hills and it's getting a bit windy. The Hoffa number 869 BMW has already spent five hours in the garage to change their turbocharger, but Michael Bonk has returned to the race with still over 16 hours racing ahead of them. Yiri has just finished his stint in the Bohemia Energy Ferrari and judging by the sweat on his brow, it was a tough one. Actually, the stint before was harder because of the sun and the temperature. Now it's getting easier, but, but it's getting dark, so the drivers which are, who are not uh, able or used to drive in the night will, be, will have it now much uh, harder. I think like uh, two, three stints if they are driving like four. By nine o'clock, Finally, the sun is disappearing behind the hills surrounding the Portima Autodrome. It's going to be very tough at night time because uh, it'll be very dark. It's very hard to understand what's happening on track. The, the grip will drop also. So it's going to be challenging for all the drivers for sure. 
Oh, problems at the first corner with two cars off. The 717 avoided the Mercedes and now can restart and resume the race. But there's troubles for Jimmy De Bruyke in the QSR 454. He is out of the car, but the car is alight. Well, here on the end of the right stuck on high speed, at the end of the main straight, uh, at high speed, speed the, the car locked up and he heard his brakes explode. He tried to brake, but the brakes were gone. Due to the spilled brake oil, he spit and ended up in a gravel trap. He didn't touch anything, but the car caught fire. Have a look at these images and the lights of the third oncoming car. The car totally shuts down. There was an accident with a lot of oil and um, yeah, I braked for the code yellow zone and then I uh, drove uh, above something, I don't know, and then after I drove about over the thing, uh, my whole car was out and no power and I wasn't able to shift or to uh, do the radio stuff with my team. I don't know what happened. The result in code 60 is an ideal moment for pit stops and for teams to deal with small issues on the cars. We are having really bad problems with our cameras and we couldn't see where the driver was on the track. So that camera there, hopefully it's working. It was an electrical fault. We've switched a wire. It's also a good time to do a brake change. Uh, you know, we were using the code 60 um, to replace our brake pads, you know, in an endurance race, 24 hours race. Uh, a brake set uh, doesn't last for uh, all 24 hours and so we had to replace them and Code 60 is a great opportunity to do so. Back to green flag racing, but it's not long before the synchro mechanics are out again. They're waiting for the number 676, who's not on the racing line. We had a uh, front half brake on us, uh, so it, it kind of knocks the brakes out because uh, the discs disc moves around and it pushes the, the pads back, it means you have no brake pedal at all. Did he take the wrong line here, expecting this to be the pit lane? No, no, that's a, uh, the last turn is very, very fast and it's blind. And I was very conscious that I was travelling really, really slowly. So I didn't want to end up over the brow going slowly and one of the GT cars comes you know, over the top and finds me in the circuit going slowly. So I pulled to the inside, there's a big yellow painted area. Um, so I pulled to that on purpose, just to make sure I was off the racing line uh, and, and trying to be safe, basically. In the darkness, it's quite hard to see the exits and the apices of the corners. But amazingly, the sector times are still more or less on par with those the drivers were doing during the day. It's not massively different, to be fair. I think, I think the lower temperatures help the engine, so anything you might lose a little bit with your eyesight you, you get a little bit more performance out of the car it's nearly midnight that means we almost halfway and all the classes we have some metal especially in the a6 class actually from the first lap the car of herbert motorsport and also the car of uh, scleria praha are constantly in a battle and also the car of gpx is in between so that's a very tight very tight battle uh, at the moment also in the TCE division, um, that's very exciting. Top car looks that it's a little bit easy, he's a few laps away from the rest, but uh, like I said, we're only halfway. We're still 12 hours ago, a lot can happen. Mid race, and only the 85 CP Racing Mercedes is on the same lap as the position ahead of them. All of the other GT division entrants are laps apart. The leader, the number 11 Bohemia Energy Ferrari, has a one lap lead over the Porsche number 91 from Herbeth. The Porsche number 24 in third from GPX Racing, three laps further back. In the TCE division, it's the TCR cars that dominate. Look at the right hand column, that's the class top three. The overall leader, the number 131 top car sport Cupra, four laps ahead of the Autorama Volkswagen number 112, with the Audi number 188 from AC Motorsport, 10 laps currently in third. This is Endurance. We also do sprint racing, but endurance, that's, yeah, endurance is uh, everything. The team spirit, the drivers together, the team together, Although the organization of the races, uh, the darkness, everything uh, coming together is really absolutely exciting and that makes endurance. It's night time in Portimao, the fifth race of the 2019 Hankook 24 hour series season. This race will have more than one victor at the end of the contest, multiple categories, that means there's a winner in each class. Well, during this race, we have the classes A6 Pro, A6 AM, SPX, 991, GT4, TCR and A3. 
and they all divided in two divisions, the GT division and TC division. With two divisions, there's an extra couple of podiums, so if you get on the division top three, you'll go home with two trophies, one for the division and one for your own class. Uh, well, this year we have seven races and two races, the 24 Hours Portimao and 24 Hours Barcelona are a part of the European and Continental uh, standings and the best result of uh, those two races will count towards the continental standing. So how do we calculate the continental standings? The points for Dubai will count for 100%, the points for Kota will also count for 100%. The best result of Patumawa or Barcelona will count towards the continental standings. So if you receive more points in Barcelona than in Portimao, uh, those points uh, will count for the continental standings. However, if you receive more points to Portimao, then the points for this race will count. With a lot of action in this FIA sanctioned 24-hour endurance series race in the Algarve region of Portugal. But after 12 hours, we're still only halfway through. And the Nordschleifer Racing 172 is in its pit garage. So we have uh, two issues. Uh, driver um, uh, complaints about vibrations in the car and loss of power. So first issue was the front left drive shaft. Uh, we, need, we fixed it uh, really quickly and we have another issue since the uh, beginning of the race and now it's really big, it's the coil. So we have the connector of the coil that uh, are a little bit damaged and so it cuts the engine and we lose uh, a lot of power. So it's some part in the track but for sure uh, we are losing some time. So it's why we are fixing these two issues uh, just now. Not always easy to drive at night as Ingo Vogler in the car collection number 34 finds out. He gets himself out of the gravel and continues. However, on another part of the track, the race leader in TCE is not as lucky. Well, I was driving to the turn 10-11. It's quite a high hill to go there. And once I got there, I noticed there was a, some slow moving, kind of a crawling car in front of me and just tried to avoid the crash to that one. And, and I, I turned to the left and I went to the gravel and when we went to the gravel it actually damaged the radiator and, and all the liquid came out of it and that was it then. Code 60 causing the stint for Klaus Bachler to be cut short. Yeah, it was uh, just 15 or 20 minutes uh, because uh, we had a, a puncture before my teammate and uh, he came in, uh, was not planned but I jumped in then after him uh, because from the driving time it made sense. And uh, then the code 60 came and uh, we changed back again. So it was uh, just 15 to 20 minutes. Drama, a little bit of smoke. As we get closer, it's the Herbeth number 91. This is the car that's been battling for the series championship and it's out. Um, went out of the last corner and suddenly I got a warning in the, in the dash. So fuel pressure and there must be something wrong with the engine. And yeah, then I looked in the mirror and I saw fire. So I stopped the car on the right side. Um, yeah. Now we have to retire the race, um, big damage on the car, hopefully we get it done for uh, Spa 24 hour. He overtook me and honestly to say I was not able to drive with him three corners because he was pretty quickly. So he just, he, he was maybe too quick, too fast. The problem was a ruptured fuel rail. The marshals were very quick to extinguish the fire. Well, it was really good, uh, they were really quickly. Um, yeah, thanks to the guys, they, they did a great job. 717 Mark II Coupe V8 have been dealing with issues for quite a long time and now the team has more or less retired the car. Uh, the, the engine uh, after a couple of hours started to use a lot of oil, so we stretched it out till uh, like uh, 15 hours. But then, then we have so much pressure in the engine that it uh, started to blow oil out, so which is uh, dangerous for the competitors and also danger that the car can caught fire. It's, it's still running, so we will do the last couple of laps to make sure that we, uh, we get to the finish, because that's what my drivers want. But uh, basically it's uh, end of story. As daylight is almost back with us, we look back fondly on the nighttime hours. Yeah, I had some great action in the night. I had two double stints in the night, so a lot of driving in the night and it was quite fun, yeah. A lot of overtake. Some risky moments, but it was quite fun, yeah. The car was great, the team did a great job. All through the night, there's been a battle for the lead in the 9-1-1 class for Porsches, and it's not over yet. We've been battling with Duo 
sort of exchanging positions. I think we'd had the lead for about three hours or so. Um, they're ahead of us right now. The car's been brilliant, no, no real problems. Uh, it's quite uh, difficult because we have speed stop, have a time. Uh, I am uh, drive at night and my, uh, my time is not so good because uh, it's first time I racing at night. Six hours of racing to go, here's how it stands. Jordan Groger, Nicky Pastorelli and Alexandra Cuno have worked hard during the night. At midnight, they were four laps down to the race leader. They've reduced that gap to just a single lap. So whilst Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari is still in the lead, number 24 GPX Racing Porsche is getting closer. And the 93 are doing well, third position overall right now. In TCE, the demise of the 131 Top Car Sport team has handed the lead to number 112 Autorama. The AC Motorsport number 188 has a 12-lap gap to the race leader. Third, the Nordschleifer Racing 172, a further six laps back. Of course, the majority of the entrants are series regulars, but there are teams and manufacturers who use events in the Hankook 24-hour series to test or present their new vehicles. The current AMG GT3, for instance, had its first endurance outing at the Hankook 24 Hours of Dubai, and today, Mercedes AMG is back. What is very special about uh, this event is uh, the new AMG that is uh, going to drive its first laps uh, ever on under race conditions uh, here. Um, uh, we're open to give manufacturers the opportunity to, uh, to test uh, these sort of uh, cars under competition uh, circumstances. It's great to see that uh, they picked this circuit and our series for, for such a test. This new Mercedes AMG has been tested by Kenneth Heyer, a veteran endurance racer. We have some difference on the front, so we uh, feel that the car is much more direct on the front uh, tyres, and when you turn in, it's, it's really, really good. So that was one of the goals, I think, where they want to have a little improvement. But we still develop. Uh, it's, it's the beginning of the, of the testing, and uh, first uh, very hard test with the 24 hours. But it's not just professional drivers that the factory have invited for this test. Mercedes wanted uh, not only feedback from uh, their factory drivers, but they wanted some of the, their typical customer drivers like myself to drive the car and give them the feedback on what we felt like you know, was the car was doing. So what's different about the new car? The idea is uh, to upgrade the current model rather than homologate an entirely new car for the next three years. That's favorable for team owners like myself so that we don't have to invest in entirely new cars. We can simply put the upgrades on. And the, the upgrades are uh, largely uh, cosmetic and largely uh, to make the cars easier to work on and more price effective to work on. It's not really so much of a performance thing. This weekend also saw a test from a future entrant. Prior to this uh, race, the Ligier JS2R was doing a few uh, hot laps. Uh, they're planning to prepare the car for uh, racing, also under night conditions. We're looking forward to see this car compete in the 24-hour series in the future. Rick Broikers, the lucky driver, to get behind the wheel of this new Ligier. Yeah, it's really nice to have a few laps in a new car, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a great car for, for gentleman drivers, but also for professional drivers who can show how quick they are. This is a special version of the car. We made this car for the 50th anniversary of Ligier. The look of the car is based on the, on the car of the GS2 of 1975, who did a second in Le Mans. And uh, this car was built for the uh, specific championship in France, the Ligier GS Cup. This one is a normal edition, it's a cup edition. Uh, but they are um, working on the endurance uh, version. That's, what they, that's why they are here, and they are trying to, to fix uh, these several things and uh, to, to, to talk with professionals in endurance. I think uh, whoever drives this car will, will love it instantly. It's, uh, it's just a nice car, and it's really easy to, to be quick in. Um, so for every kind of driver, it will be interested to, to have a go in this car. With the GT and TCE divisions racing on the track at the same time, it's a given that here in the Creventic organised Hankook 24-hour series, there is plenty of overtaking. Of course, the faster, normally GT cars, have to make sure that they make their passes in a safe way. Now, this normally goes very well, but in the battle between Jürgen Herrig in the 94 Porsche and Matteo Malicelli in the number 11 Ferrari, it is the Breukers in the 101 Cupra who needs to take avoiding action. Yeah, he was next to me and the, the, the turn and I, I thought I was in front of him. I turn in, he turns in, but 
I think he didn't saw me and he almost uh, hit me, so I had to uh, break really hard. But there was a Ferrari behind me, so it was a sketchy moment, but uh, good luck, nothing got hit or something. The Nord's Life for Racing entry number 172 is in for a pit stop, and Michael Deroux goes straight into the pit garage. They're currently in third position, but they have eight laps in hand over the fourth position car, that's the Cupra number 101, so they have got a bit of time to work with. But here's the Red Camel 101, also coming into their pit garage. When we started the race, we had a problem with our suspension. One of the uh, left rear suspension broke at the beginning of the race, and at the end of the race, the same thing happened, the same, uh, same, si uh, same, uh, same corner. So uh, that cost 10 minutes repair, so it's now really difficult to get to P3. The number 11 Ferrari still late. They've got a couple of wins already this season on their result sheets. Uh, this year is like this. We, we won four races with the new car. Uh, the new car is only wins. So for the moment we are really happy. The team knows that a winning streak can't continue endlessly and the spectre of defeat is always just around the corner. Uh, maybe in Barcelona, we don't know, but or maybe I don't know, but but uh, it's difficult to win uh, all the races. It's a five-lap lead now, but a 24-hour race with just three drivers is proving very difficult. I prefer 12 hours, 14 hours, but 24 is really long. Klaus Rader has just finished his stint in what's called the Golden Hour. It's known as this because you can see the track clearly, but the track and ambient temperatures are ideal for the tyres and the car's engine. Oh, it's perfect. The, the track was very fast. Um, and yeah, it was uh, nice. The sun was rising. It's the best time for racing. Just over three hours to go. The AC Motorsport Audi, currently second in the TCE division, has stopped at the end of the main straight. Well, the wheel broke off. So literally the bolts broke off. Uh, in, the, in the last corner, I was in the last corner and the wheel just left the car, so that's, that's not good. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not the best place to have it, it's quite a quick corner. Um, and then you just meet, miss the pit, ex pit exit, so you have to travel across the straight. Uh, yeah, so we didn't uh, gain us any time, that's for sure. The car is still in the race. Well, we were P2 in class and we had a bit of advantage on P3, uh, but now we're losing quite some time. Um, but we'll see in the end, I mean, we're going to fix it as, as quick as we can and I'm going to jump in and try and uh, get back in there. Getting into his final stint in the new Mercedes AMG GT3, Charles Putman. Uh, the 500 car had a little bit of an incident last night before I got in it. Took a slight uh, bit of contact and bent the steering a little bit, but the car doesn't seem to mind at all. It's driving straight on through it. It, it still feels good. Uh, I think really the... Uh, the pro drivers here, uh, sort of like the mission I was given, is just to is not so much to try to win this race, but just to see what the car is capable of, to try to wring it out and get the, the best we can out of it and what the what the upgrades are doing. Into the last Charles three starts hours, his stint sixth overall for as the other now. standings. In GT, Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari still leading the race. Five laps now is the gap back to the number 24 from GPX Racing. The Bockenspiegel number 22 Ferrari, a further five laps back in third. With the second place TCE runner, the 188 being at the side of the track, how does this affect the standings? Well, the 112 Autorama Motorsport by Wolfpower Volkswagen has now completed 565 laps. That's a 13 lap advantage over the stricken number 188 from AC Motorsport. That's now been recovered. Third place Nodge Life for Racing Car is 24 laps back from the lead. So Autorama really just needs now to try and get the car safely to the finish flag. This is endurance. Racing is fun because you have to test your limits and you're fighting against other guys, so it's really challenging and it's, it's very exciting. It is uh, the salt in life, it's racing. Heat, sweat, pain, and hopefully a trophy at the end. In the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao, part of the FIA sanctioned 24 hour endurance series, the GT and touring car runners are getting ready for the last hours of racing. So what do they expect? Uh, we had a technical issue when we were on second or third position in the AM and we lost 17 laps with that. So the 17 laps made that, uh, that we for sure will not be on podium this race and uh, yeah, we, we cannot do much against it. 
Uh, last three hours, win. <laughs> we want to win. Just this one. Expectations: We need to try and chase down the uh, duo car. Well, we do our best. See, see what we get to. <laughs> Both of the 991 teams want the win. And the whole team is geared up for that. Pit stop better. All is better. Our team and our my friends uh, is do what to be uh, first. The number 172 is fighting to stay in the TCR top three, so they've lined up their best driver. The, the last uh, hours, uh, it's uh, Michel uh, Salenbar uh, come uh, put for, for the finish, uh, the, the race. The one in it, Audi from AC Motorsport, did get back. It seems the wheel hub is not giving in that easily, but the hard work of the mechanics has paid off. And they'll send their car back out on the track, still displaying the green number two on the side. That means they haven't lost second position in the TCE division. The GT4 leader had a 10 lap lead, but now that needs the attention of its pit crew. We had a, lot, um, a small technical problem, um, which was caused when I was accelerating. The car didn't take the full throttle. Um, so the engine uh, electronic put us a failure inside, um, so for the safety mode, and then I had to come uh, into the pit first, and hopefully, uh, yeah, we can uh, keep our lead. Here's another battle for position. Klaus Kresnik is chasing down Dan Wheeler in the Synchro Honda number 676. Now, the cars are in two different classes, the orange TCR car against the red A3, but they are in the same TCE division, and this is for fourth position overall. Klaus gets past in the Cupra and extends his lead. But just a few laps later, he's in the barrier. Uh, yeah, big crash, turn one. What I looked from the onboard was uh, turn one, something broke off on the left front. And uh, more than I don't know, the most important thing is that the driver is okay. He's only to the medical center for checks. And this is just the worst thing you can imagine uh, for racing, especially in the end of the race. It's really a pity we can't fix it anymore. Uh, let's just hope Klaus is okay and we can do any more than this. A broken brake disc. Ends the race for the Red Camel Jordan NL number 101 Cupra. Maximum stint time, two hours. And Charles Putman did just that, but in two cars. It was a little bit tiring because I just got out of, <laughs> out of my car and into this one. But uh, for sort of a back-to-back -back, uh, thing, if you will. But we've been running really good laps in the 85. We're in second place right now in the AM division. Uh, unfortunately, with where the balance of performance is, but uh, the car's running really good, and that's not to take anything away from the Herbert guys who are leading that AM division. They have some really fast guys in that car. Meanwhile, the MRS number 980 is pushed through the pit lane. Uh, yeah, I, I just lost power in the last sector, and now uh, the team saw that it was the, uh, the diff, so they changed uh, the diff now. Hendrik can rest assured that this very young team manager is keeping an eye on her mechanics who are repairing the number 980 Porsche. Yuri Pesirik is having a quick rest before his final stint. So we have two hours till the end. The first hour I will sleep and the second hour I go in the car. <laughs> so, but I will not push anymore too much, just to keep some average pace and bring it to home. The finish is getting closer, but it's not getting any easier on the track where the temperatures are rising again. Yeah, it was pretty hot. I uh, drove one and a half spins on the same tires. The track was pretty hot as well. It got hotter and hotter, so automatically more oversteer as well and more slidey car. And I think all had a bit problems with that. So in the end, it was pretty OK for that. The number 676 Honda from Synchro Motorsport is leading the A3 class. They don't really have a chance of claiming a top three position in the TCE series. They're running nine laps behind with less than an hour to go. That is until the Nordschleifer Racing number 172, who is running third, stops on track. The car stopped in the track and we don't know exactly why, because we have no radio in this car for the moment. And uh, the engineer make expertise and uh, we discover quickly it's uh, pump in the tank fuel i think it's possible to finish uh, three the number 172 back on the track and still in third with about a lap and a half in hand the number 93 is leading their class as well as being fourth overall we have no pressure from behind because we are two laps in front but we are uh, unfortunately one minute behind the third one so we are not on the 
on the podium. Of course, we are on the podium from the AM, but not on the overall. And the team that is currently third overall has chosen Leonard Weiss to do the final laps of this race. I was really, really nervous when I got into the car because we had Klaus Bachler in the back of us. Uh, so we were fighting for P3. David Puel did a good stint before me and uh, made some space. It's drama again for the number 172 from Nordschleifer Racing. They just had that car repaired and back out. So uh, we think it's probably something uh, wrong on the harness, global harness, so we need to check everything and to fix it. Endurance racing, what a tough sport. Losing a podium in the final 10 minutes of the race. Yes, sure, it's endurance, so 24 hours and not uh, 23 hours and 50 minutes. So it's like that. So sometimes it's uh, for uh, us and sometimes it's for the others. Getting ready to rejoin the race, the number 717, from the Core Oise team. Remember, their car failed during the night, but they are going to take that chequered flag. 24 hours of racing is complete. The pit wall is filled in the GT division with a seven lap lead. Yeri Pesarik claims victory for Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha in the Hankook 24 hours of Portimao. And an even bigger lead. Massive win in the TCE division. 19 laps the margin of victory as Ralph Hengler secures the top podium position for the number 112 Autorama Motorsport by Wolf Power Racing entry. In the GT division, overall victory once again goes to Scuderia Praha. Geary keeping the car at a nice easy pace to avoid any technical issues at the end. Lap before the end, uh, the Honda Civic touched me from behind <laughs> because I was too slow. <laughs> a big smile under the helmet of Alan James. It's his Honda Civic that, against all odds, did get onto the overall podium in TCE. Overall podium, that's just unreal. For a, for a car that we built ourselves, it's it's not a factory car, it's not a you know a manufacturer's car, we built this ourselves. And uh, <laughs> quite emotional about it, to be honest. <laughs> the TCE win once again goes to the Autorama Motorsport number 122. Ah, uh, tomorrow's a really hard stint because you can hear, hear really hear every, every noise that the cars makes. But uh, we are lucky that the cars uh, survived this fight from the 24 hour series. It's my first win in this series, so I'm quite really happy. Yes. We had a great race. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, we had a lot of battles, um, enjoyment, um, sadness, even at the last, as you saw, uh, the 172 from Nordschleife Racing. They were at the third place in the overall, and I think eight minutes before the end, they had bad luck, and the number three, Synchro, was on the podium for the TCE overall. Um, the GT division, was very, it was exciting the whole race, and I think we have uh, beautiful winners on the podium at the end. And here are those winners after 24 hours and 721 laps. The Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari 488 takes the GT win and maximum championship points. Second in GT, GPX Racing Porsche number 24, two laps back. Two laps further back, the Wockenspiegel team Monschau Ferrari and number 22 claims third. In the TCE division, it's the TCR Autorama Volkswagen Golf completing 641 laps that takes the top step. AC Motorsports number 188 Audi RS3 second overall, third overall and first in the A3 class, the Honda number 676 from Synchro Motorsport. In the GT classes, of course, it's the number 11 Bohemia Energy team that take home the trophy for A6 Pro. The number 93 Herbeth Motorsport take the win in A6 Am. In SPX, only the Liper Motorsport number 710 completed enough laps and therefore they are the winners. In the 991 category, it's the number 909 Porsche that takes the win for Duo Racing. In GT4, the number 50 of Hoffa Racing takes the top step. And the classes in the TCE division has the Autorama number 112 taking the top step in that class as well, as the Honda FK8 Civic from Synchro Motorsport proudly win the A3 class. The next race will be next month, so actually after the summer break, and then we will be in the beautiful Barcelona on the beautiful circuit, uh, the La Catalunya, uh, where we have the next race, also in 24-hour race. Uh, so, yeah, again, a lot of excitement.
After the excitement of this third edition of the Hankook 24 Hours of Port Bow, the action will continue after our summer break on the 31st of August and the 1st of September. It's the Hankook 24 Hours of Barcelona. But after that, in October, the TCR Spa 500 in Belgium. And in November, the 24 Hours of Court at USA. Be there at any or all of these as a spectator or better still as a competitor. All the information you need is at 24hseries.com.